This is better than my imagination This is more than a dream come true Without the slightest bit of hesitation I knew what I was meant to do carries all his boxes at the same time, he's got nothing left to trip over. I love it when you talk like that. So, do you have a big opening plant? No. My budget will just about cover the first month's rent and a used tea bag. Unless, of course, I can find some money. Hey, how'd you do that? Never ask a man how he does his tricks. Okay, but could you do it again? I'm saving for a new stereo. I got something even better. so hard. Well, never is the first time. It's never hard. There's nothing at stake. But let's say this time, if you find the ball, I'll pay for breakfast. If you don't, you do. You're on. Okay. That one. No, that one. You're sure? Yeah. I guess breakfast's on me. I've only got 35 cents. I hope you're not too hungry. Well, I guess we'll go on a diet. That's okay. I'll get some more work done. Oh, what? Wait a minute. What's this here? <laughs> I guess we eat. Hey, how'd you do that? All right, I forgot. <laughs> Seal and heal. Unbelievable. A spray that closes wounds and heals them. Yes, I, I, I must admit I will be very proud when it's available in drugstores. It will be a boon to medical treatment all over the world. We've never come across a product this revolutionary. Thank you. Well, I, I've read this over. Everything seems quite satisfactory. Good, good. As soon as you deliver the prototype and the formula, you'll be advanced the first $30,000. The money will come in very handy. What will you do with it? Buy a new Einstein poster and donate a great portion of the money to the Children's Relief Fund. That's wonderful. Yes, I should have bought a new poster a long time ago. New place, huh? Yeah, just opened today. That's awesome. I'm for private enterprise. Mm, glad to hear it. You wouldn't happen to have X-Men issue 37, would you? Yeah, got it right here. Thanks. How'd you get that? 
The guy had finished reading it by the time he bumped into me. It looks a little empty. And that comic looks about as lonely as a porcupine at a slow dance. I've got two very valuable Captain Nobles. If I talk to my wallet now, all I'd hear is echoes. No problem. I'll give you the comics and you pay me when you sell them. Thanks. something to show you. Can I go first? I might forget mine. Go ahead. Okay, I need three cups and a cork. Uh, three cups. Uh, check that drawer right there. There's your cork. All right. Keep your eye on the cup with the cork and try and tell me where it is. faster than that to fool me. Try it this time. Okay, Dr. Jake, where's the cork? Where are you? You know, I see some possibilities in this. Andrew, don't even think about it. Money should be earned through hard work. Take this, for example. You're going to sell tomatoes? No, just watch. latest invention. You could put whole salads back together. Andrew, the healing properties contained in this chemical can be used on humans to cure any cuts or wounds. The scientific corporation is paying a considerable amount of money to use it. Congratulations, Dr. J. Thank you, Andrew. I'm going to be making some money, too. I hope not through that cup trick. <sighs> no. You see, my friend Walter has just opened this new comic book store. Do we need another one? You're kidding, right? Right. It's a great store, but he needed a few more collector's editions. So we made a deal, and I'm going to let him have some of my comics for his display. Great. How much is he paying you for them? Well, nothing right away, but when he sells them, we're going to split it 50-50. Andrew, Andrew, Andrew. The first rule of business. Never give anyone a product without being paid up front. Second rule, always have a contract. Oh, we have a contract. He gave me his word, and we shook hands shook hands. Andrew, this is a contract. This is good business. Accurate and legal in every way. This is not good business. Never let your emotions rule your decisions. Walter's word is good enough for me. Andrew, why don't you come with me to deliver my prototype? Are you lonely? No, but what you need is a little practical business experience. That way, we'll get some idea of the correct way to conduct affairs of commerce. Is this going to be as boring as it sounds? No, just take notes. You said it wouldn't be boring. Dr. Jeffcoat? Hello, I'm Pauline Kelly. I'm Mr. Conley's assistant. Ah. Is Kelly with an E-Y or a Y? Why? Because I want to write it down. <laughs> Uh, I have the seal and heel prototype and formula for Mr. Connolly. Yes, he was expecting you, but he's just finishing up a meeting, and he asked that I put it in our safe. Could you slow down a little, please? <laughs> School project. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Well, if you gentlemen wouldn't mind taking a seat, Mr. Connolly will be with you shortly. Thank you. Hmm. Uh, Dr. J, aren't you forgetting something? Right. There was to have been a, uh, well, according to the contract, uh, uh, Oh, of course. Our messenger's at the bank right now picking up your money. Please, have a seat. Thank you.
What kind of place is this? There's no comics. Dr. J, it's been ten minutes. Could Andrew, this is the world of business. Things take time. I'm sorry. People are making phone calls, writing memos, deciding where to have lunch. When do they get any work done? <laughs> Where is he? Maybe he ran out of memo paper and he's calling to arrange a meeting about it. Excuse me, could you ring Ms. Kelly's office, please? Who? Miss Pauline Kelly. Oh, I'm sorry, but we don't have anyone here by that name. She works for Mr. Connolly. Who? Is this your first day here? I've worked here five years. Well, then you should know Mr. Connolly. I'm sorry, sir, but believe me, there's no one here by that name. No one here. You can put that down now. Look, I was here last week. He's in suite 204 down the hall. I didn't get your name. Andrew. See? Mr. Connolly? Mr. Connolly, it's it's Benjamin Jeffcoat. The seal and heel guy. He knows who I am. Mr. Connolly. Maybe he went out for a bite. With his sofa? I've been had. No, you haven't. Miss Kelly, put your stuff in the safe. I'll go get it. Andrew, at this point, I think we can assume that my stuff is not in the safe and that by now, Ms. Kelly is on a beach somewhere sipping a drink with an umbrella in it. I guess I wasn't cut out for big business deals. Don't let it get you down. Even Spider-Man's been tricked. Just because you made a fool of yourself once doesn't mean you'll do it again. Thank you. Hey, today's not a total loss. Maybe Walter sold my comics. <sighs> What's wrong? Nothing, nothing. Something. What is it? Did I happen to mention the third rule of good business practice to you? No. Never give away your only copy of a formula. Of course not. Only a fool would. Or a very busy genius. It's got to be here somewhere. What are you worried about? You got a patent, didn't you? You didn't? Oh, Dr. J, Dr. J, you may have just broken the fourth rule of business. Well... I was going to go down to the patent office tomorrow, but I was so busy trying to finish the prototype, so anxious to deliver it, that I... I know how you feel, Dr. J. Once I was so looking forward to going to the school dance, I went straight there without picking up my date. Do you really think that is a valid analogy? Maybe not, because I didn't have a date. But if I did, imagine how she would have felt. <laughs> Andrew, there are certain times when a man wants to be alone. When? <sighs> when I'm down in the dumps, I go out and buy some fun-filled, action-packed comics. And it will do a world of good for you, too. <laughs> Thank you. But I don't think so. What are you going to do? Sit around here till you realize you broke the fifth rule of business? <laughs> Look at those great Captain Nobles. Where? They're not there. I bet he sold them. Well, let's hope he didn't leave town. What? 
Walter. Looks like business is going great. It's busier than a centipede at a shoe sale. Excuse me? Oh, uh, this is my friend, Dr. Jeff Cope. Dr. J, this is Walter. Oh, the scientist guy. Well, that's not exactly what it says in my diploma, but nice to meet you. Well, right back at you. How's your inventing business? It's a bumpy road. Oh, here's your share of the Captain Nobles I sold. Three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars for comics? Well, two fifty for the comics. Fifty dollars is an extra bonus for believing in me and my store. See, Doctor J, not everybody in business is a crook. No. What's this all about? Doctor J got ripped off. Oh, I'd like to hear about that. Dr. J had this great invention, seal and heal, that could help people. And this guy swiped it. <laughs> well, let me guess. You showed up with the goods, left it with some smooth talker, and all you got left with was a pocket full of air. How'd you know that? They got you with the old hit and run, the old razzle-dazzle, the old now you see it, now you don't. Thank you, I, I get the point. <laughs> you seem to be very familiar with this. Well, let's just say I haven't sold comic books all my life. Now, what do you think would happen if you were to make up another one of these inventions that this fella would pay big bucks for? He'd just rip off Dr. J again. <laughs> Not if we pull the old flapjack on him. Ah. You must have something lying around. Anti-gravity machine. What? Like the one the Fantastic Four used in their war against Mole Man. Everybody wants an anti-gravity machine. I think the boy just picked up your tab. All right, Andrew. When I press red, you go up. When I press blue, you go down. Andrew, I pushed the blue button. I thought the blue button was up. The red button is up. The blue button is down. Well, wouldn't it be better if the blue button was up? Why? Well, you know, because the sky is blue. And... Andrew, let's just leave it like this, all right? You're the inventor. Thank you. Now, don't forget, we have to fool Walter as well. When he's working this, he's got to believe I'm making you fly with that. You can count on me. I still think the blue button should be up. When I press the red button, Andrew will go up. Shouldn't blue be up? That's what I thought. You see, what we have here is really quite interesting. The machine that I will be operating, combined with the receiver that Andrew is wearing, well, actually, it's, it's an offshoot of Einstein's unified field theory. Great. Is everybody ready? When's he gonna get here? It's been half an hour. Be patient. I remember doing the old train hook scam. I waited in a railway station for six months. What happened when the guy finally showed up? He didn't. Get ready, here he comes. Good afternoon. May I help you, sir? Are you Walter? Who's asking? I came about your invention. Bring the cash. What do you think this is? Well, the frosting looks pretty. I'd like to see the color of the cake. You like this flavor? Mm-hmm. Fattening. Okay, let's see what you got. Anti-gravity machine. Mm-hmm, I know what it's called, but uh, does it work? Hmm. Excuse me, young man, uh, could you give me a hand? I'm busy. This will just take a minute. I'll give you the comic. Could you stand over there? What is that? You'll love it. Just take a minute. Whoa! I don't believe it. Dude, give it a whirl. This is amazing. The blue lights for down. Nothing's happening. That's okay. This is fun. 
Maybe he needs a little something to weigh him down a bit. Maybe you're right. I didn't press any button. Where's he going? Works better than I thought. Hey, come back here. All right, where is he? Maybe he went to pick out some furniture for that office of yours. You? I want my money back. Machine worked, didn't it? I want my money back. All right, there. I gave them thirty thousand dollars for an anti-gravity machine. Anti-gravity machine, huh? Yeah. Watch. Hey, worked a minute ago. That kid flew out of here with thirty thousand dollars of my hard-earned money. Well, let's fly out together and see if we can find him. All right. Justice triumphs. When the sun shines, the shrubs will grow. There's nothing sweeter than when the honey returns to the bee. <laughs> that was great. Who should we get next? It looks great. Yeah, I really appreciate you getting those comics on consignment for me. No problem. I just called a few of my collective friends and told them how fast you sold mine. <laughs> I got my seal and heel back. And the police found there were outstanding warrants on Connolly. I'll bet you he was as sore as a thumb at a hammer convention. I was just gonna say that. Say, how'd you guys do that gravity trick? Uh, so, uh, what happened to the money? The police have it. They're giving it to charity. I know. Never ask a man how he does his tricks. <laughs> Great display window, huh, Dr. G? I don't know. Something seems to be missing. Walter, you were a very big help to me. Why don't you get yourself a few extra new additions? You're quite a guy, Doc. I'll be if I make up a contract, and I'll pay you back as soon as I sell them. I don't think a contract will be necessary. Unlock the